Welcome, this video will take you through the second part of the photo collage task where we bring in your scan designs into Photoshop and start to add some color to that tonal design that you've already created. So the elements and principles we're really looking at are creating a strong sense of contrast, a sense of unity, especially within the colors. So we might be going with complementary colors or harmonious colors, that being colors that are sort of warm or cool colors for the harmonious ones and contrasting being opposite on the color wheel. So the reds and the greens, uh, purples and yellows, blues and oranges. This video is a demonstration. Um, so note that you don't have to take every single step. So have a look at the description for the time stamped sort of chapters, which you might be wanting to go through and undertake rather than watching the whole thing. So be watching and then maybe pause and then do the action that's been completed and then continue on with your design or the video. So first of all, let's get started in Photoshop. And so what we wanna do is I've already opened up this file. And so in terms of going through and doing that, it's just going to file, then new, creating an A4, and that might be visible just under print, then A4, and then determine if you want it to be landscape or portrait, Color mode at this stage, we can do RGB, but otherwise CMYK, because we are gonna be printing it out. And then background color, white is also suitable. And that will be our new document. As I said before, I'm just doing this because just to speed the video up essentially. Now what we wanna do is place in your image. So you should be able to go to just File Explorer and drag and drop the image in. Otherwise, if you can't find the location, um, as easy that way, go to file, then place embedded, then find the location here and select place. That will then place the, um, the file uh, on the document. And so now what we wanna go through and do is potentially just tweak the image a little bit in terms of correcting the tones and colors. Uh, we might need to be rotating it, enlarging it, so on and so forth. And some of you might have also scanned a number of your um, collages at once. So it might be just going through and selecting the one that you need, copying that, deleting the remainder of the layer or the other layer, and then continuing on like pasting your design and then continuing on from here. So first of all, we can go through and rotate the image. So making sure we're selecting the correct layer. And then I go to edits, free transformation, and that will allow me to rotate it if need be. And remember to hold shift when doing that and that will go in 15 degree increments. So getting it to 90 degrees is a lot easier. The other thing we wanna do is just make it so it's gonna fill that A3 space. With this task, you're probably gonna be chopping off some of the edges. And so then just move the image into wherever we uh, wanna be displaying it. So I wanna see the eye here and potentially that whole word up the top. Then to continue, I can select another tool or I can select another icon um, or pro, uh, tool up in the, the top of the screen. Now we wanna go through and just adjust the colors. So that's going to image, adjustments, and then levels. In here, we can either be selecting one of these tone pickers. So this is the eyedropper for the shadow. So set a black point. And so what we want to be jet black, it could be that point there. And you'll notice this will all change. And then same thing with the white. Otherwise you can use this slider to determine where we want white to be. So we went white to be right there. And then the middle one is the tone. So we can play around with that a little bit more and potentially just get a little bit more texture through that image. So if your image was overexposed or underexposed, this is a step for you uh, to go through and just correct that. So now we can see the text looks a lot more interesting at the top. You potentially wanna go through and invert the image. So that's going image, because essentially our design at the moment is a negative of the original. So that was image adjustments and then down to invert. However, I like the previous one, so I'm just gonna undo that. Some of you will have the text that will be back to front. And so how we can correct that is image, 
then down to image, ro uh, image rotation, and then flip along the horizontal or the vertical. But I'm happy with where it was. The next phase is really looking at the layer palette, and that's where we can be applying different masks. Like what we've done within the darkroom, we've applied masks to create an image. We're gonna be doing that to have an image so it either exposes um, and also adjusting the, the layer mask. So that's providing color into the design. So adding color, making sure you've got the correct layer selected, and maybe we wanna change the name of that layer. So you just double click, and then we might say collage. Then down the bottom of the layer palette, you'll have this icon here. So it looks like a circle, half white, half black, and it's the adjustments layer. And in this task, we're gonna be doing with hue and saturation. So hue is another word for color, and then saturation is obviously the intensity of the color. Because it's a black and white image, we wanna go through and select colorize. So then we can start to, <coughs> sorry, include color into our design. So increase the saturation and now select the color that we wanna be including for the design. And that's a good way to introduce color into the design without using a brush tool, um, which is a lot more cumbersome. You won't necessarily get as good result. And effectively what it's doing is just putting a separate layer or a separate sort of color filter above our original image. So now if I turn all these off, we've got our image and then we've got this color filter that sits over the top of that. We can turn that on and off or we can change its intensity, so how see-through it is or how present it is. So it gives us a lot of flexibility in adjusting our design and manipulating our designs. As you'll have more and more layers, we can turn them off, we can continue to manipulate them um, without you know, having to undo and redo all the time. Lastly, we wanna look at is um, what we call a layer mask. And so what we can be doing within this space, and you can be applying layer mask to image as well, but we'll be applying it here. And so this little icon here, this white box, is our layer mask. And so what we can do is it allows us to be applying multiple colors or removing some of the color from that layer, but having a bit more flexibility of it. So rather than using the effects up here or using a gradient, we can simply use the brush tool and make sure the brush is quite large. So that's the brackets beside P. And you potentially want to also have something that probably has a bit more of a softer edge rather than a hard edge. And now whatever's present in white here, that's going to be showing it that it's visible. And anything that's black is then therefore invisible. So that'd be the color. So I'm just going to flick these, the color picker to black. And so when I start painting now, notice it will be a black little icon reappearing in, the, sorry, a black area appearing in this icon and our color will disappear. As we can see, that's happening there. So I might position it there. And so we can see that's taken effect there. And so I can always flick back to white and then reintroduce some color into the design and then it will update there. And so therefore I can then go create a new layer a new hue, and maybe we'll just change the colors a little bit. And now I can be <clears throat> placing in some color into that space. So that's gone through and introduced a bit of color to our design using layer masks and also using those <coughs> layer adjustments. Lastly, you might wanna also introduce another layer altogether onto our design. And so this might be one of your designs that wasn't necessarily as successful. Oops, zoom that out a little bit. position that stretched a little bit but that's okay for this demo
And so now with this image, what we can do is be adjusting its, its qualities of, rather than being normal, that means it's gonna be 100% solid. So now if I go darken, it's gonna have that sort of darken effect, dissolve. Multiply tends to be a really good one. So it's picking up some of the layers from the top and some of the layers from its underlining. Overlay looks quite good. And so thereby we can be introducing multiple collages into our design to become a little bit more complex. And these ones that are sitting at the top, probably you wanna have less amount of detail on it. Otherwise it's gonna cause confusion. So have a look at those photo collage prints that you did in the dark room that probably weren't successful. They could come in really suitable now. This is a good uh, quick little guide to helping you out with your photo collage Photoshop task.